what is the point? I keep reviewing stuff. The point is, uh, we are going to learn new method and I want to review so you know that what we are trying to do. I give you this circuit, find the pole. Well, you already found it, but we are going to use a ma ma uh, fast method. This can only help you to find the pole, but not the zero. Okay, so instead of deriving the small signal model, which you don't want to do that already, that's E122, right? Unless you don't know, uh, you don't have that in your cheat sheet right? or the fundamental circuit in your cheat sheet, right? Or you also don't want to, uh, also you cannot use inspection to find out the whole transfer function. Then what can you do? You can use some um, inspection only to find the pole. So here what it promises you is that it can find you, help you to find the pole, but not this function. It's not really helping you to get this function, but it can tell you that the pole is one over RDCL. Okay, so how do we do it? So you need to follow this very carefully, right? Put in your cheat sheet in the exam, right? Don't make mistakes. Each node along the signal path is associated with a pole. Okay, so first let's identify the signal path. It goes from V in and then to V out. This is the signal path. Along this path, how many nodes do we have? Okay, someone say two. Which two? Uh, at, what, at which location? You can say it at the drain of M1 or whatever. What? Someone say at the gate of M1 and then, and then drain of the M1. Is this two pole or one pole? I mean, one no one. Very good. Yeah. Because they are connected by ideal uh, wire. Okay. So I have two. Okay. Great. Then I know that there are two poles. And some of you think that it's wrong. We just got one pole, right? How can we say two poles? But let's see why. The second step is set all independent source to zero, which is very natural because we're doing AC, right? That's what we have been doing. What are the independent source here? VDD definitely is independence. We will set to zero. And there's one more. We out depends on we in, right? So actually we in is the independent source, okay? Okay, so zero. And then from each node, okay? See what is the equivalent capacitance bring you to the ground? What is the equivalent resistance bring you to the ground? And then the pole is one over RC. So uh, my analogy is like that you're on the third floor on, of this boat building. Your task is to find out what are the elevator brings you to the ground for. That is capacitance. And then what are the stairs that can bring you to the ground for? That is the resistance. And that elevator times the stairs inverse is the pole. Okay, so let's try this. Let's start with the first pole that you identify. I call it one. What is the resistance that can bring me to ground if I'm an electron here? Zero, because you just ground me. What is the capacitance that will bring me to the ground? I try, I don't know. What is the capacitance of us? Is this? Yeah. Um, uh, because for zero impedance, we have zero, yeah, I think it need to be uh, infinity, right? Because you can, let, you can never charge up, change the voltage, right? Or think about the cap, uh, impedance at DC or at very small uh, frequency, I have zero impedance to the ground, right? So. But then it's difficult to say, actually. But anyway, this one is still the out, or, or maybe undefined, I don't know, actually. Right? But anyway, this for this one,
the pole is equals to one over RC. It, this is at infinity. Okay, so you don't have the pole. Okay, and then how about the second one? What is the resistor that brings me to the ground? Very good. Rd parallel Ro. Why I can use Ro? Because I ground the input, right? So here is Ro, right? If we ignore channel length modulation, then we ignore Ro. Okay. How about CL? Do I should should I put the parallel impedance of CL? Is capacitor, right? So that don't get confused. Actually, in the midterm, sometimes I see people put this together, right? Because just by the rule here is only inductor. I am talking about this, only the resistor, right? I'm talking about the stairs. I'm asking you how many stairs can bring me to the ground floor. Don't tell me what is the elevator, right? You have two elevator over there, right? What is the capacitor that will bring me to ground from the port two? Only CL, right? So what is the pole of this node? One over R D parallel R O times C L. And that is exactly what we got earlier. R D parallel C L, right? Where we don't have channel length modulation. We got it negative in this one and a positive. Okay. Uh yeah, formally. This is a negative pole, right? By by the theorem. But what we care is not. I mean, you can put negative here also because this is talking about the absolute value. You only give it the absolute value. Yeah. So that's a good question. See, what we are giving you is the absolute value of the pole. Okay. So why this is useful? Because later you have a very complicated circuit. You are not able to use inspection to the, get the equation right away or you don't want to derive the small signal model, then you use this approach. Okay, so I finish a little bit early. We can stop here. Any questions on other slides? Okay, if no, let's stop now.